about what do you think about the quality of the school lunch? Well, the company that runs it, right? As you know, so we have a company, Sedexo, that runs it. So they're set to certain nutritional value standards by the state. So they have to provide a lunch every day that hits those nutritional values and portions. So we have very little say in the lunch. It's more about um, what they produce. So sometimes lunches are better than others. You don't want string beans, but by a nutritional value, they have to give you string beans. Probably can't be made much healthier, but the problem is can we make it tastier? But with that, there's a trade-off of finances. So when you're trying to make, you know, they're a company, they're trying to make money. So what's lunch, 375, I think? 375, if they want to make it taste better, better ingredient or something, then the price goes up of what they have to pay to make it. So then that 375 and what they make shrinks. So that's like a business decision for them. So um, you can always make food taste better. I think uh, student voice is like the most important thing you kind of learn sometimes about, you know, if you put together, if you're like, lunch stinks, man, we want this. Like, no one's going to listen to that. But if you take a poll or a Google form and you poll students and you say, we've uh, done a representation of 15% of the building, we'd like to see more of this and more of that, then you present it. People go, oh, okay, we can do that. And, you know, you might not get all of it, but you present some things and then there's a give and take. So I think you, there's always value in putting your opinion out there. We don't control it. Right? We signed a contract with a company that they're going to provide food for us that hits these nutritional marks. And then, you know, we can always request things with them. They work good with us, but, or excuse me, well with us. But, um, you know, what we can do is kind of limited because we don't have access to the food. We can always impart suggestions to them and hope they follow. Maybe it's redundant. Like we get, you know, every Tuesday is chicken fingers like that gets old like i need a variety so you give a variety of suggestions you know maybe if they serve something let's say they do i don't know let's say they do meatloaf on wednesday and so oh, we haven't had meatloaf get a poll we pulled 100 kids of 100 kids 68 percent of the kids said it was better than a normal wednesday food could you please put this on the schedule and then kind of that's how you build a rapport with them all right so we can do those kind of things we say, hey, Mount Isle School Districts are looking for a company, and then we'll take three or four companies, we'll put a bid in, and then usually what happens is they have like a, a food tasting. So here, look, here's what a standard student lunch will look like, here's what breakfast will look like, here's the snacks we serve, and you get to taste it, it's like a food tasting, we taste it, and then based on what we taste and what the cost is, whoever's involved in the process, usually people at central office, um, they'll choose a company and then that company will get a contract one to three five years and they're the exclusive person to sell food so let's say that you're doing let's say you're on a, a, boy, a girls basketball team you want to do a fundraiser and you want to sell candy bars during lunch you can't sell them during lunch because that's a competition with a company that we have hired so we can't compete because if you sell a candy bar it takes away from someone buying a bag of doritos at lunch so there's like those non-competitive agreements that we have to agree with which also holds us back of doing fundraisers with food so i think it dipped during covid i'm not gonna lie uh you know but there were very unique circumstances everything had to be a cold lunch because we didn't eat lunch right you got a bag that you ran out to your school bus at the end of the day how many ways can you make a cold lunch better um and then coming back last year it was hard because we didn't know who was coming to school and who weren't, who wasn't, right? So you're talking about, they're trying to decide, we usually make 500 lunches a day. So then they make 500 lunches, but they only sell 210 because kids didn't come to school. So they have to throw out 300 lunches at a financial cost. And then other days they made 300 and 500 kids one lunch. And then people are just getting peanut butter jelly sandwiches and angry. So this is the first year we've really leveled and we know the numbers. And I felt like there's been a slow climb up. Could it get better? Absolutely. So, interview was brought to you by? Jim Kramer, principal of Mount Isle Middle School. What do you think about the quality of the school lunch? Um, I think, like, when people buy lunch, they, like, throw it around and actually eating it. Uh, it could be better. It's not very good. I think it's really bad, and 
And like all the vegetables have like, like weird like sauce on them, so. It's okay, maybe a little bit more or less dry for everything. Is this lunch healthy? Or like, do you think that it could be made healthier or tastier? Well, I think some are, things are really good, but most of them aren't. It could be much, made much healthier and tastier, yeah. It's like really obvious that they made it in like 10 minutes. Making it more healthier by like putting like more like fruits and vegetables and like. Um, it should probably be more healthier because there's more crap food than, you know, healthy food. Do you think that we could achieve a better quality lunch? How and why? Yes, because um, people with allergies deserve to have food at school. How? By getting better food? Maybe like not as much like snacks and stuff like that. Yes, probably more salads and, and more options for different people. Would you rather bring your lunch or buy it? Why? I'd rather bring so I can bring whatever I want to eat. Bring, because my mommy makes it for me. It's really tasty. I would probably rather bring lunch because I get to choose what I eat that day. I usually um, bring lunch. How do you think we can improve the school lunch? important to improve it for allergy people because it's not fair to them who, when they don't bring lunch, they can't eat anything because of their allergies. Make it like not expired and <laughs> taste good. By making it healthier, by adding more fruits and vegetables. Probably like more healthy and more like more options for like different like lifestyles. What's stopping us from getting um, like better school lunch quality? Do you think? I think it's because of money. Mm, money. Probably money, because the school has to pay for it. Probably the price of everything. Do you think the school lunch quality has changed over the years? I think so, yeah. But I've only been in school for two years, so last year was the same, though. But I think so. No, I've been having like, the same expired chocolate milk since I was in like first grade. No, not really. Um, yes. What made you buy school lunch? Um, when I don't have any food and I need food. <laughs> um, if they don't bring it from home. What made you not want to buy school lunch? Um, because it's not good. Thank you. You're welcome. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Caden Ginsberg. What do you think about intro to foods, food compared to the school lunch food? I think it tastes a lot better, and that's what we should eat for lunch.